series on modern romance and relationships, Cuffin' Season. Research tells us that America's 20-somethings are having less sex. My name is Grace. I'm 21 from Pennsylvania. I do not have as much sex as I wish I were having. I'm in a monogamous relationship of about a year, and his interest in it just kind of waned. We have this notion that male sexuality is by nature predatory or dangerous, and it isn't. I think that the essence of male sexuality, like female sexuality, is relational, and sex is incredibly emotional and um, stirs us deeply. Right. But we need to have spaces to talk about that. One thing I wanted to make sure we got to uh, is reflected in a tweet we got from a man, Pastor Drew Jones, who tweeted, pornography promises the thrills without the vulnerabilities of a real relationship. A lot's been made about the impact of pornography, both to give unreasonable expectations about sex and also to depict other forms of sexuality that help people identify who they are and what they're into and, and things like that. What do you think is the factor of pornography today on young people's sex lives? Um, the, uh on young people's sex lives, I think that pornography um, has unfortunately become sort of our default sex education, which is a, the fault of the American sex ed system, which is either non-existent or the best you might get is having a, you know, middle-aged uh, woman putting a condom on a banana. It's like the best you're going to see. You're never going to hear the word clitoris. You're not going to see, um, hear about female pleasure. It's not valued. We call the vulva the vagina, even though the vagina is the, only, is the canal. So when you see, um, when you don't have the tools to know what real sex is like because you haven't been taught about it, your default is going to be pornography. Um, pornography is, there's nothing inherently wrong with pornography. It's meant to be entertainment. It's not meant to be real life. But when it's the only thing you have, it's the only thing that you learn from, which ends up creating these unrealistic expectations around sexuality. You, women think that they need to have these tiny waists and blonde hair and giant boobs and no hair on their vulvas whatsoever in order to be attractive. And men think they have to have these gigantic penises. And there's no uh, attention paid to the clitoris, which is why the gender gap exists in right. the first place. So um, pornography, um, on top of that, has also become increasingly increasingly better like if you look at your porn hubs and your red tubes like it's a lot of garbage and it's pretty much just like gangbangs and threesomes and the same stuff made over and over again but these there are, are a lot of really these are websites it's kind of like a youtube for pornography for lack of a better yeah definition. just just like the free pornography you can get on the internet but right. there are a lot of really great uh pornographers who are making excellent porn like eric and if you look at things on x and like yes they are behind a paywall but it is so much better as far as representation of different body types different relationships different um, bodies in general and that but that is and while that is great and gives you a more substantial form of entertainment we're so wrapped up with pornography mm -hmm. and our dating apps and able to swipe 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 as much as we want and no real need to connect with anybody that it does have the potential to make us a little bit more antisocial. I do want to acknowledge by the way of course this is we, we've been talking a lot about sex and dating in heterosexual contexts. We have heard from quite a few of you who are LGBT. I am gay myself so that is definitely not something that is lost on us. There's also another aspect of non-heterosexuality that at least two of you have commented on. Ben emailed, could the decline in interest in sexual acts among young people be due to an increased visibility for people in the asexuality community?